The Witch's Tale. The fascination of the eerie. Weird, blood-chilling tales told by old Nancy, the witch of Salem, and Satan, the wise black cat. They are waiting, waiting for you. Now. Seventeen-year-old I be today. Yes, sir. A hundred and seventeen-year-old. <laughs> well, Satan, let's get down to our yarn spinning. <laughs> Come on, have thou stuff them lights so we'll have it nice and dark. <laughs> and draw up to the fire so that you can gaze into the embers. You'll need a fire to warm your blood. <laughs> you listen to this pretty tale. <laughs> You gaze into the embers deep, and soon you'll see a big railway depot in the town of London, England. <laughs> you hear them funny little engines the English people got? <laughs> soon you'll see a funny little coach, like the ones they pulled behind them. And soon you'll hear our yarn about the puzzle. <laughs> the puzzle! <laughs> Everything's straight away, sir, and the guard has assured me, Mr. Holmes, that you'll have the compartment to yourself, sir, all the way to here. Oh, that's just bully. <laughs> this uh, chauffeur of yours is a born fixer, Cecil. Yes. You know, since I first came to England, I've learned to appreciate the privacy of your railway compartment system. And today, I take it, you're especially appreciative. A chap who's on his way to meet the parents of his prospective bride for the first time will want privacy... Uh, for the examination of his conscience. <laughs> Our Julia has much respect for her stepmother's opinion. I really have only my future father-in-law to worry about. You know, it's funny you haven't heard of him. I'm told he's one of the most successful attorneys in London. Well, his name's vaguely familiar. Omeroy. Omeroy. Yeah, Theodore Omeroy. Firm of Omeroy and Hardy. Oh, is he any other claim to fame? Well, uh, <laughs> Julia tells me he's a puzzle expert. Puzzle expert? Yeah, you know, puzzles are his hobby. Oh, you mean he solves those uh, crossword thingy bobs and plays with those wire and steel? <laughs> what do you call them, sir? Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's the my word. <laughs> well, let's be walking towards the train, sir. Well. Lead the way, Colin. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Dash. Sorry, you won't stand with the next train, Willis. We've only had these few minutes together since you arrived from Dover. Oh, I can't stay over. It was awfully good of you to meet me here for this brief get-together. Oh, I have to hear more of the wonderful girl you've been writing me about. You met her in France? Yeah. Well, deuce to be romantic. You from USA and she from England go to France to find each other. Well, the poet says, two shall be born a whole wide world apart. <laughs> oh, oh, the man is in love. He's even quoting poetry. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have got it pretty badly. Well, here's a thing. Nearly ready to stop. I'm very anxious to rejoin her. Why did she leave Paris just ahead of you? Our stupid conventions. Julia Chaperone couldn't get away, and she maintained it wasn't proper for engaged people to travel unaccompanied. Oh, I say. I'm sorry I didn't tell the old Dodo to go jump in the Seine with a Victorian notion. <laughs> Julia shouldn't have made that trip alone. She was too badly upset. Oh, upset? Well, you see, she was called home by a telegram from her stepmother. It was one of those vaguely worded, your presence is required immediately messages. Makes you imagine all sorts of calamities. <laughs> well, Julia decided something had happened to her father. She's uh, very devoted to him. Well, to ease of mind, I called her home by long distance and was told there was no illness there or accident or death. They just wouldn't explain the reason for her summons, though. Well, that only made it more urgent. So when I put her on the train, she was still greatly worried. Sounds rather mysterious. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but whatever the trouble is, it can be very serious. Illness, death, and accident have been definitely ruled out. Oh, Lord! Uh-uh, that means me. Uh, which is my compartment, Collins? Uh, right here, sir. Number three. Uh, this is my gentleman guard, which I promised to take care of. Oh, yes. Sit right in, sir. You'll be alone in the compartment all the way, sir. I've arranged for this. Oh, that's a spine guard. Here, uh, thanks very much. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, now, in perfect solitude, you can prepare yourself to meet your future father-in-law. <laughs> Too bad you haven't made a study of puzzles, Willis. Then it accepts you as a kindred soul. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I'll have to give that subject a lot of serious thought. Yes, yes. <laughs> Toodle-oo, old thing. So long, Cecil. Goodbye, Colin. Point, Colin. Best of luck, Willis. Thanks. I may need it. Well, I'm off. Well, a nice 
Christian kept your friend. The what? Oh, I beg your pardon. But where... You weren't in this compartment a moment ago. How did you... A puzzle, isn't it? You really must give serious thought to the subject of puzzles, Mr. Holmes. You know my name? Very well. Now, permit me to tell you mine. I am Theodore Omeroy. You... You're Julia's father. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> now I recognize you from the photographs. Oh, this is a pleasure, sir. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. I've recently met with a serious injury. An injury? A rather painful one. Although, as you see, I wear no bandages. Uh, was it merely your hand that was injured, sir? You were very pale. As though you had experienced a serious illness. You have been ill. Oh, that's the reason Mrs. Omeroyd sent that telegram to Julia. It was because of me that telegram was sent. But let's not talk about that now, if you don't mind. I prefer a more pleasant subject. I'm very glad to know you, my boy. And I to know you, sir. But uh, how did you know me? Well, that's an easy puzzle to solve. According to my daughter's letters, there can be but one Willis Holmes. <laughs> well, I, I hope I can convince you of that, sir. But the guard said I was to be alone in this compartment. And when he closed the door, I was alone. How on earth did you... I came aboard from the other side. The other side? Yes. You see how simple puzzles are when one has told the answers. <laughs> My gracious. Here yeah, I've been talking of puzzles for a solid hour. I hope you'll forgive me. You see, to me, all life is an endless succession of intricate problems which the successful man must solve for himself and which the good man, the man who loves, must solve for others. I wanted you to know my philosophy. And now, I won't bore you any longer. Oh, you haven't bored me at all, sir. I've been intensely interested. Uh, ticket, please, sir. Oh, good Lord, conductor, not again. I'm sorry to bother you, but it's rules, sir. All right, sir. And thank you. <laughs> Well, one puzzle I'd wish you'd solve for me, Mr. Omeroyd, is why that conductor never asked to see your ticket. He's looked at mine four times. I ride free, my boy. Are you a stockholder of this road? No. I'm well acquainted with the chairman of Governor Ford, though. Uh, Mr. Pevin. My firm handles his legal business. The last time I rode this train, I carried 50,000 pounds of his money in currency. In currency? Thousand pound notes. <laughs> That's rather dangerous, isn't it? Men have been murdered for a great deal less. It is a dangerous business. But when one is accustomed to handling large sums, one grows careless. Ah, we're pulling into Whitton. I leave you here, my boy. Oh, uh, aren't you going home to fearing, Mr. Ormoyd? Not now. First I must return to Whitton. That's where Mr. Trezor has his residence. You won't see me again until tomorrow. In the meantime, will you give a little serious thought to the subject of puzzles? I certainly shall, Mr. Omeroyd. But uh, I value your expert opinion as to where and how I best begin. Circumstances will indicate your course of thought. Widow! Widow! All right, oh, Widow! Oh, it's been wonderful meeting you like this. I was a little worried at the prospect of formally asking you to accept me as your son-in-law. I accept you gladly. You'll look after Julia, won't you? I love your daughter very dearly, sir. And you will remember that he who loves must solve life's problems for others. <laughs> I must leave you until tomorrow. Uh, again, excuse my hand. The injury I mentioned. Dear me, where's my cigarette case? Uh, cigarette case? I... I haven't seen you use one, sir. I'm sure I had it with me. I, I must have dropped it here. Oh, well, I'll look for it. And... Just take care of it if you find it. You and Julia, take good care of it. Oh, I, I found it already. It's falling behind these cushions. <coughs> Mr. Rumble. Oh, uh, guard. Guard! Hi, sir. Here, sir. Uh, which way did the gentleman go who was with me in this compartment? A gentleman with you? In this compartment, sir? Of course. He just stepped out. He was standing right beside the door. You must have seen him. This door's been closer until you opened it yourself just now. You've been alone in this compartment all the way from London. Uh, 
The gentleman we've been expecting has arrived, Mrs. Omeroyd. Mr. Willis Holmes. Well, show him in, Barker. And then inform Miss Julia that he's here. Well, I'll fetch Julia if you wish, Mrs. Omeroyd. Well, perhaps you'd better, Mr. Thompson. You're going to let Julia tell the young man our bad news? Naturally. He's had a fine husband at present. You think he'll break the engagement when he learns? Well, what would you do if you were in his place, Mr. Harvey? Mr. Willis Holmes. Oh, well, come in, Mr. Holmes. Julia will be here directly. I am Mrs. Omeroyd. Oh, this is a great pleasure, Mrs. Omeroyd. Uh, Julia has told me so many things about you, I feel I already know you. Hmm. I'll wager she never told you many nice things about me. Agatha, control yourself. Really, I... Uh, allow me to present these gentlemen, Mr. Hardy and Mr. Holmes. How do you do, young man? Mr. Hardy, you're Mr. Omeroyd's partner, I imagine. I'm the junior member of Omeroyd and Hardy. And this is Mr. Justice Rowley, Mr. Holmes. Uh, how do you do, uh, Justice Rowley? <laughs> Justice is a difficult title, isn't it? In America, I believe you would call me judge, although I'm merely a provincial justice of the peace. Uh, Julia will be down directly, Mrs. Omeroyd. Oh, excuse me. Oh, this is Mr. Toms, Mr. Holmes. How do you do? Pleasure, old chap. Charms, all that you know. Uh, Mr. Toms is my husband's personal secretary. Uh, won't you all sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Holmes looks rather uncomfortable. I don't imagine he expected to encounter such a large gathering. Oh, I, uh, of course he's uncomfortable. Well, chap. Comes to pay a visit to Miss Omeroyd's family and finds a house party in full swing about the place. House party? Huh. Agatha, you must control yourself. I don't understand. Well, there's nothing you need to understand, old man. Not now. I'm told you're an American. How do you like England? I have learned to like it very much, Mr. Toms, with uh, some exceptions. Oh, what are they? Well, one is the type of guard employed on your railway train. You don't approve of our railway guards. Well, I've just had a very ridiculous experience with one. A chap either afflicted with blindness or a very faulty sense of humor. It's a rather silly story, but if you can't hear it, I... Willis! Oh, Julia! Oh, Willis, I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Darling, what's the matter? Julia, control yourself. Things are already bad enough, Julia. If you wish to tell him now of our disgrace, at least wait until I can leave the room. Disgrace? Well, what do you mean? Julia, dear, I talked to your father on the train an hour ago, and he didn't mention any trouble here. What did you say? You talked to my father? Yes, yes, we traveled from London together as far as with him. I don't oh, believe it. He wouldn't have dared. Quiet! Did he say where he was going when he left you? Did he say when he'd be home? Yes. He was on his way to a place called Witham. They say he'd be home tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, thank God. I knew everything would come out all right. The father would come back and explain. Mr. Holmes was mistaken in the man he talked to. Yes, Ormeroy couldn't have traveled on that train as far as Witham. The police would have arrested him before he got aboard. Police? Sir, Mr. Bobby has missed him. Every guard and conductor on that road has his description. Well, I haven't the faintest idea what any of you are talking about. Though I've never met him before, I've seen his photographs. I was neither mistaken nor the dupe of an imposter. What did you think you will besides the other things you've told us? Well, you talked mostly about puzzles. It was, Father. Won't someone please explain to me what all this is about? Uh, perhaps that's my painful duty, Mr. Holmes. Through powerful influence, we've thus far kept the story from the newspapers. But two weeks ago, Theodore Omeroy disappeared with 50,000 pounds belonging to a client of our firm, a Mr. Travis of Whittam. indication has been found that Mr. Omeroyd met with accident or foul play, well, the inference is obvious. And he left me, his wife, to face the scandal. Travis is the man he was on his way to see today. You have been imposed upon. No, it was Father. I know he talked with Father. So do I. And I hardly think, Justice Rowley, that a practical joker would have possessed this cigarette case with Mr. Omeroyd's monogram upon it. Father! Yes. My joke! It's Omeroyd's! Where did you get that silver case? From the compartment where he left it, as he alighted from the train. Everything will be explained. He said he'd be home tomorrow. Willis, he said he'd be home tomorrow? Yes. Maybe that's him now. Maybe it'll Don't be ridiculous. Your father wouldn't ring his own doorbell. If he comes here, the police will bring him as a prisoner. Come in. A police officer is here to see you, Mrs. Omeroy. Oh, they've arrested him. If they have, dear, they'll soon let him go. Show the officer in. Yes, ma'am. I ask to come in on you like this, ladies and gentlemen. And Mr. Justice Rowley. What is it, then? Speak up. It's bad news, sir. The constables at Whitham have found Mr. Omeroy, sir. They've arrested him? No, ma'am. They found him dead. Dead? What? Dead? Oh, the doctor what? says he's been dead two weeks. Dead two weeks? Yes, sir. They'll bring his body home first thing tomorrow. Oh. His body home tomorrow? Merciful God! What was it that rode with me in that compartment? <laughs>
But, my dear Holmes, it's been established conclusively that my partner was lying dead in that pit where they found him. The very time you insist he was with you on that train. Nevertheless, he, or his spirit, was with me as I said. Oh, I know it sounds mad. Impossible. I've always laughed at the tales of the supernatural, just as you're laughing at me now. But I saw Mr. Omeroy. He talked with me an hour, I tell you. Julia, you at least believe me. I don't know. It's all so horrible. It's too fantastic for anyone to believe. And even if you did see a ghost, Holmes, what purpose did the thing accomplish? Oh, none, I guess. Still, I feel it had a purpose in coming to me. One I can't grasp. Mm, seems to me the traditional storybook phantom would have been of more practical service, Mr. Holmes. They always accuse their murderer. And such an accusation seems the only means by which the killer can ever be brought to justice. We know now that poor Omeroy was struck down for that large sum of money he carried. But other than that obvious conclusion, we of the law haven't found a single clue. The ghost should have known his murder had left no trail. But instead of dropping a helpful hint... Mr. Holmes says his spectre merely talked of puzzles. That would have been my father's way. Julia, you're not going to become a champion of this young man's mad delusion. If your father's spirit could return to Earth, he'd appear to you or to me, rather than to Zantio's fiancé whom he never met in life. Father always said, a man who loves solves the problems of others. That's what he said to me. Oh, this is asinine. You've had a dream, my boy. Better forget it. No, for it wasn't a dream. It was real. And it had a purpose. Only I'm too blind to see it. I didn't dream this silver cigarette case. Isn't that tangible proof? I'm afraid that now I must shatter your illusions. I was advised today that the coach in which you traveled from London by a strange coincidence was the one in which two weeks before Mr. Romeroy took his fatal journey to Witham. Lying in idleness, the car had not been cleaned carefully. So you found that case where the unfortunate man had mislaid it. And he returned to put it in my hands was his purpose. I see it now. Somehow in this cigarette case is the solution of the puzzle. Well, oh, since you regard the case in that light, perhaps you'd better keep it into my keeping as a possible clue for the police. No, I give it to no one. For now I know a guilty conscience has been keener than my wits. A guilty conscience? Are you accusing... I accuse no one yet. Oh, what, what do you mean? mean? I mean that now everyone in this room, at different times with a different excuse have asked me for this case. Let me close this door, Julia. We can then talk in private. Willis, what did you mean by the insinuation you made a moment ago? Exactly what I said. That perhaps a guilty conscience has been keener than my wits. The killer of your father wants this cigarette case. Because he has some reason to be afraid of it. Your father's partner, Hardy, came to me two days ago and requested it as a keepsake. The day before that, Tom's made the same request. Yesterday, your stepmother asked for it, and now Rowley would like to have it. Fortunately, some instinct made me refuse to give it up, even before I guessed it was the solution of my ghastly puzzle. Oh, but your suspicions are terrible. In spite of the frightful way they'd acted... Those people were my father's friends. Your father was killed for a sum of money that only his friends or his confidants knew he carried on his person. If I can only solve the puzzle of the cigarette case, I'll learn which one is guilty. His last words to me were, take care of it. You and Julia, take good care of it. Your theory must be right. With father, everything was the foundation of a puzzle. You think there may be a secret compartment in the case? Yes, in which something is hidden. The metal is unnaturally thick on the sides and heavily embossed. There may be a shallow cavity between. Look for a spring or lever hidden in that scroll work. Here I am. Feel around the edges. Maybe something slides. That's it. That's it. A sliding edge. Look, I found it. Look. The metal slides are hollow. And there's a folded paper in the recess. What's written on it? It's dated June 12th. The day your father went to Whittam with that 50,000 pounds. It says... On the understanding that if I have not left England by tomorrow noon, Theodore Omeroy, to whom I give this writing, will make its contents public. I hereby confess... Confess? To what? Oh, that can wait. Let me see whose name is signed here. <coughs> Who turned out those lights? Someone is with us in this room. Ah, let me go. Let me go. You won't get this paper. No. Ah. Oh, Willis. Willis. Is he 
going to be all right? Of course, he's coming to now. Oh, Nothing wrong with a bump on the head. What happened in this room before you screamed, Julia? Yes, for heaven's sake, what happened? One of you know what happened as well as I do. For one of you came in that door while our backs were turned. One of you turned off these lights. One of you struck Willis, then seized the paper we found and ran. And the one of you who did it is the one who killed my father. The girl's insane. Mad. How dare you accuse one of us, your father's friend. Because one of you is guilty. Oh, Oh, Julia. Oh, Willis, darling, are you all right now? Yes. Whoever hit me got away with the paper before we saw the name upon it. Yes, they got away. I, I failed your father. When you failed, I may succeed. If my father came to you, perhaps he'll come again to me. What are you doing, Julia? I have locked the one door leading from this room. Why? What have you done? She's turned off the lights. Stop that. Turn on those lights. Oh, I say, you're going too far. No. Only one of you needs the other dark in this locked room. But if my prayer is answered, that one must face the man he killed. Oh, Lord, I pray thee, send my father from the dead to bring justice. Open the door. Turn on these lights. Are you afraid? No, no, I didn't kill him. Father, Father, come to me from the grave. This nonsense has gone far enough. Are you afraid? I have no cause to be afraid. Lord, send my father here to bring justice. Oh, I'm not going to be made a fool of by a sick-brained girl. Think what you like. I'm going to leave this room. Yes, yes, we'll all leave. Open that door. Come on, quickly. Oh, the terrible light. Hey, where you are. That voice, Mr. Omeroy. There you are. Good heavens. Father. Father, God has let you answer. Some puzzles are too difficult for men to solve alone. Oh, let me out of this room! Oh, don't, don't be afraid. That, 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 that's not a home rod voice. You see, uh, Holmes and the girl are, are playing a trick upon us in the darkness. No. There's something awful here. A hazy light is growing in this room. Homeroid's face is taking shape there. Uh, keep him away! Keep him away! You help us with our puzzle, Roly. I'll do anything you say. Only don't come near me with your cold, dead hands. Keep away. I'll tell them. I'll confess. But keep away. No. Oh, Louis. Yes. Oh. Yes. I killed him. Tell them why. He learned I'd taken bribes. He made me sign a confession that would send me to prison if I stayed in England. I waited for him on the road to private house. I didn't know about the money he had with him. All I wanted was the paper that I didn't find. The paper in that cigarette case that I never found until tonight. Here it is. Use it to send me to the gallows. But don't come near me with your cold, dead hands. Don't come near me with your cold, dead hands. I have the paper. His confession. You and Tom hold on to him. I'll phone for the police. Oh, I won't try to get away. There's no escape from the dead. The dead. Father! Father! Willis! His form is fading. Goodbye, Julia. My task is over. We will not meet here again. Father! Julia, dear. Take care of her, my boy. And remember, he who loves must solve the puzzles of life for others. Folks, come see us next time. I had a birthday. <laughs> <laughs>